While we try to be as helpful as possible, this podcast should not be considered as professional or financial advice. It contains general information only, and you should seek out professional advice for your own personal circumstances before making any financial decisions. Welcome back, guys. I'm Julia. And I'm Nick. And this is The Enthusiast Lab. Damn straight. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of The Enthusiast Lab. This is part two uh, of the SiteWorks episode that we released last week. Yep. So last week we talked about soil classifications and all the things that are kind of included in your SiteWorks. And this week we're going to be talking about the three other things that alter and change how much your SiteWorks can cost because they're big factors to be factoring in. 100%. 100%. So Last week, we covered how the soil classification... Wow. Classification. <laughs> classification. <laughs> <laughs> that was another soul. Um, how your soil classification has a big impact on the price of your site works. Yes. Um, and today, we're going to be talking at, about bushfire attack level, which yep. is your bowel. Yep. Your noise attenuation and your coastal attenuation if it's applicable if yes. it's applicable so these three things are the in brackets if applicable yeah based on where your block is located yeah i've norm normally you'll see one maybe two very rarely you'll see all three yeah i haven't seen all three before i don't think i have there's always some way but yeah. it was a fucking shit show okay well let's well, jump it's a cheap block because <laughs> you have to put all the fucking shit on top yep so let's jump into the first one, uh, which I've got as bowel, which is your bushfire attack level. Mm-hmm. And this is a method of rating the intensity of a location's potential exposure to bushfire. Yeah, yeah, to like to forever bushland where it can potentially cause a you know fire. Yeah, um, and this is dictated by a few factors, and the main thing is bushland, and yes. the second thing is the trajectory of wind. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what bushfire attack level is, it's basically there to help prevent embers from entering your home yes. and catching a light. Yep. It is not there to... Make your house fireproof, no. No, it, you can't sit in your house. If there's a bushfire coming your way, it basically is there to give you time to get out. You do not sit and roast marshmallows no, in your house. No, no, look, like... <laughs> probably not the best way to explain it, but sure. Um, like... That there are people that will try and sit and fight. Look, you've got your decisions if you want to try and do that. Normally, you want to try and get that little bit of extra time to get out. Get the most important shit. Get yourselves out. Be in a safe position and get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. That's all it's all about. So, the bushfire, it comes in different ratings, obviously. Yes. Yep. Do you want to go through them? Yes. Um, what? Okay, yes. Uh, so, <laughs> I was going to say something else first, but we'll go back to that. So, you've got We'll, we'll explain them as we go. So we've got bow low, bow 12.5, yep. bow 19, yep. bow 29, bow 40, and then bow FZ. Fire zone. Yes. So when they assess if you are in a bushfire attack area, it is assessed when you're going for permits, not on what's happening in the future. So if you're building in an estate that is still developing, and at the moment, there's still empty land there that's going to be developed on. They're not going to assess it saying, yeah, on, that, on oh, that bushland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, they're going to assess it as the bushland is there now. Absolutely. Not on what might be happening in a year's time where more houses will be built. 100%. Because they used to do that back in the day. And I remember doing this for many times where you'd get the full fire management plan that is provided by the developer going, hey, look, right now it's got a 12.5 or a 19 rating. But in the future, it will be bell low, which means that there is no affected uh, bell rating or it will drop down. Mm-hmm. And for many years, it was fine, you know, because they would get it done within time. And obviously, the big fires that happened, you know, a couple of years ago and just the constant, you know, there was always this bit of a fuckery with what developers were trying to get away with. Mm-hmm. And council basically turned around and said, we're no longer accepting fire management plans. And now we want, if the block is in an affected area, 
we want a assessment done. And based on that assessment, we want to know uh, we need the home upgraded at point of permits. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they won't release those permits without knowing that the home has been upgraded based on what has been affected for that specific lot. Correct. Yeah. Um, and the reason they do that, and it is because of the bushfires that happened, I think it was 2020. I think it was the summer of between 2019, 2020. No, it was 2020 because we had masks. We had the big fire. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it was, oh, was it? I don't know. It, it was the big bushfires. Of, I, I want to say 2020, where we had bushfires in Ellenbrook. We had bushfires up. Uh, it was really Gange bad over east. And over east. And they Fuck. were all sparking at the same time. It was, um, it was so sad, man. So many people lost their houses. Yeah. It was gut wrenching. And I think that probably helped convince the, the councils to change a certain parts of their policies mm. um, and what they accepted. But again, it's not one event that's caused it. It's a multitude of things over time. And. Once they change it, you either work with it or you just don't get it. Yeah. Um, but that was a real bad one that obviously, man, you could see it. Like there were photos from outside of Earth. You could see the fires yeah, in, in, in Australia. Yeah. That's fucking mental, man. Yeah. So um, what, okay, you're in a bushfire attack level Correct. area. Yep. What does that mean? What that means is you need to start doing upgrades to your home that are more fire retardant or fire resistant. Yep. Um, and that is stuff like doors, windows, and seals. Yeah. I'm waiting for you to jump. Oh, in at any well, point fucking! In time. I don't know. You're looking at me. <laughs> like, I keep looking at you jumping okay, at any cool. point so, in time. <laughs> so, what the most components that they normally try and upgrade is like rather than having just normal standard resi glass, they might have slightly thicker or or toughened windows, like the actual spec of the the windows. Um, what they try and do is with a lot of homes, especially when they've got brickwork outside, every two to three jo uh, bricks, you normally have your weep holes, mm -hmm. which allows, especially a double brick, that allows the cavity to breathe. Mm -hmm. So what happens in bushfire affected areas is normally they those holes get replaced with little vents, which is basically doing everything possible to prevent embers from entering into the roof space or into the home, which might cause a fire. Mm -hmm. Because even though the fire might be a few kilometers away, the embers can travel so much further ahead and that can cause spot fires. Yes. And you don't want that to be affecting your home. So the big ones is like all the seals, they get upgraded so that they're a bit more sturdier, a bit more resistant to that. Uh, you know, you get vents into those areas. You get the tougher windows. Um, basically all the shit that's required to affect it. You also, if you've got wood, uh, wood frame for the roof, Normally, um, like our builders do, they put the anticon into the roofing, which just, again, helps just with the, basically with all the requirements and shit mm. like that, to be honest. So there's quite a bit, and that also means that it costs quite a bit more. Yep. And then the assessment of how it gets done is you can get fixed bow ratings for certain levels, depending on the builders, um, and sometimes provisional, until it gets assessed and knowing exactly what the quotes are needed, because... The bigger the windows, the more it may potentially cost you, mm -hmm. as well as how many doors you've got or the seals required. Um, the roof space is the biggest one, mm -hmm. um, depending if they need anticon, if they need to change something. So the bigger the home, the bigger the roof space, the more it's going to cost for these effect for the bowel upgrades. Yes. Because it needs to be done. And you can actually check your block if it's in an affected area by looking up DFES. Yeah, D. D F E S yes, dot com. Dot com. Um, and look up the bushfire map area and type in your address. And it will actually show you normally, uh, if I remember correctly, normally the affected areas are in like a pink zone. Yeah, it's like an um, pink one. Yeah, purpley pink. And you just base it in. And if it's in that affected area, what that normally means when the engineers are doing their assessment on your soil, they'll be doing these checks. And you might say that it's in a bushfire area, which means you need an assessment. Yep. And that, that assessment is one of the fees in your site works. Yes, and that assessment will dictate whether you're 12.5, 19, 29, Correct. 40 or Because it, be, it will be an individual assessment for that block, not not basing, because in a lot of the estates, it's like a generic for that mm -hmm. stage. This will be a more independent, because sometimes we've had, hey, it's a 12.5, but it was done so long ago. And then we've done the assessment and we don't need it anymore. Yeah. Happy days. Fucking winning. Mm -hmm. Got some money back. But if not, at least you know where you're at. Yeah. Um, and... Bow low, which is essentially no bushfire attack level. Yes. Uh, bow 12.5 12, 12. and bow 19, those three or two really 
uh, they can be part of your fixed site works potentially. No, no, that they'll be a separate. They'll be your fixed bell costs. Okay. So they, some builders do like to offer them because that's very common in a lot of areas. Mm. So they tend to know exactly what they need based on the certain roof areas. So they put allowance in and they know they're pretty safe on it. Yep. Once you start getting into 29 and 40, it can get a lot more complicated very quickly. Yep. And if you have other items like a noise, that can even further start affecting the requirements that may be needed. So it's it becomes a lot more difficult so the first portion can be fixed so you can make it quite easy mm -hmm. and and even then they normally fix up to a certain size of a roof yep and then after that, they just go cool we need to quote it individually because it just gets too big yep yep so i hope that gives a little bit more explanation of what bell is then did you get any info about how far away some of them are like how far away from bushland you need to be and shit no, so I'm, I'm pretty it's really sure. hard to find this information online. Yeah. Um, I think this is very much a builder knowledge because there's definitely handbooks. Well, fuck, that, that throws it in ball in my court. I should be doing fucking knowledge. No, it's like builder knowledge. Yeah. It is something that the builders have a handbook on with specific distances and amount of bushland, whether you're near parkland, what kind of shrubbery. Well, um, yeah, because it, it assesses stuff. like what fauna you've got and shit. But I'm pretty sure. Hold on. You keep talking while I do the numbers. I'm talking, I'm breaking up noise because I'm making up some noise because Nick is counting on his fingers. He Okay, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure, look, at the end of the day, it gives you a bit of an idea because it's pretty realistic, but if I'm wrong, fucking by all means, tell me and I'll correct it. I'm pretty sure the affected area begins within 100 metres from this forever bushland. Mm -hmm. So if you're within the first like 100 metres, you're at 12.5. Yeah. So if, if you're over 100 low yes within 100 it'll be 12.5 then i'm pretty sure it goes to 75 meters 19 50 meters 29 and then like Next sub door. and then it's 40 and then fire zone when you're in the affected area no matter what you've got it all around you okay but don't quote us guys no don't quote me exactly but it's it's within a certain like a certain distance certain distance it's not like oh shit there's a bush line a kilometer away and that's why i've got bushfire it's like no no it's within like 100 meters mm. and obviously the closer you are to it the worse it gets. So you can see this in a lot of coastal areas where you'll actually get, um, you know, like a lot of dunes with like a lot of fucking shrubs and shit mm -hmm. and they're not going to remove them. So if you're front on, you're probably, you know, facing towards the fucking beach, you're probably going to get affected with the coastal shit, but you're also going to get affected with bow because yep. you're so close to it. Whereas if you're a couple streets back, you might not be affected with it. Well, you've mentioned coastal twice now, so... I'm I mean, fucking so ready. Let's just kind of go to coastal. Yeah, go. Um, so the next thing to consider on when you start looking at a block is coastal. Yes. And what coastal is the distance you are to an open body of water. So like the Mandra estuary. Yes. Um, or to the ocean. And yep. that's why it's really that's the main coastal. One. Yeah. Uh, it's the main one. Um, and the reason for it is because your home is exposed to high concentrations of airborne sea salt. Yes. Which in turn causes corrosion. Yep. Um, and, and we don't want that. No. And this is assessed by the Australian National Construction Code and it outlines the required standards for the building materials that can be used. Yes. Uh, and when we start talking about uh, building materials that can be used, mm -hmm. certain um, building materials corrode a lot quicker. So things that get upgraded are stuff like uh, your brick bonds, your uh, gutters, your fascias, your rivets, bolts. Uh, handles, window frames, the list keeps going on. Roof. Roof. Roof's a big one. It right. Basically, a lot of metal shit is going to get affected. The actual bond between your bricks, ironically, that needs to actually have a different mixture that actually helps compensate because otherwise that salt kills it. It's like a car, man. Mm. You leave that shit near the coast, man, you're going to fuck your paint. Yeah. There's a whole reason why like, you try and keep your shit garaged in those areas. Paint. Imagine, <laughs> imagine how much it's damaging your fucking your house. You know mm. what I mean? Like, and that's why you get like a lot of those stains, like that salt stains on like windows in those areas and shit. It's just, yeah, it's it's not a like immediate. It's a constant over time. Yeah. It just eats it away. Yeah, because the constant exposure to salty air accelerates how quickly things deteriorate. 100%. So that includes paints, like the front yeah. uh, paint on your home. Yeah. That needs to be... The render on the front and shit, that all has to be of a specific grade. Like everything starts changing and that's why... 
and obviously we'll go into more detail but then it's then it becomes a how close you are to that because then it's a lot more volatile versus being further away from it well that's leading me perfectly into the distance segueing into the next um, one so the closer you are to the ocean or to the water the more it will cost to build because more things need to be upgraded to a certain level yes so one to five kilometers you're safe you're good to go mm-hmm. then it goes uh one kilometer to 800 meters to the water Yep. 800 metres to 400 metres to the water. Yep. And then 400 metres to 100 metres. Yep. I think and then 100 is, to zero, yeah, which is like your, your beach front. Yeah. We've had some at like at that and that is fucked up. Yeah. Like 30 plus K to upgrade the home. So this is measured by a bird's eye view, similar to the bushfire attack. I don't know if we mentioned that. It's measured by bird's eye view. Yeah. It's not kind of weaving your way through the streets. <laughs> yeah. you know, Let you me just find <laughs> the biggest detour around <laughs> for something that's literally in front of me. So it's measured by bird's eye view and DFES is the DFES map um, for coastal. There isn't a specific website to go for this. You just Google maps. use Google Maps. Google Maps on satellite image. Try and find where your street is. And, you know, a lot of the developments, because they're still being developed, so sometimes they're not updated, get as close to as you can and then fucking just yeet it with the difference between that and where the shoreline is. Yeah, because it's measured from where the shoreline breaks. Yes. Um, so that's so obviously where everything gets fucking blown away from. Correct. Um, and your, psh, <laughs> <that way. laughs> your coastal, um, like the price upgrades depends on the distance. Correct. But also depends on the size um, of the home and is charged on the total square meterage of the home. Yes. Because you have to upgrade uh, the windows, the handles, the not windows, the, the yeah, window yeah, frames. Yeah, windows and window frames. Um, like there's it. so many things that yeah, need to be upgraded. Yeah. So they're kind of calculating it on the either square meterage of the home or the amount of windows and doors. Correct. Them. And again, it comes to the close you are. So once you get to a specific one, the biggest one that costs a norm- an exorbitant amount, right, is the roof mm. when you're choosing color bond. When you get to a specific rating of like how close it is, you have to change your normal, you know, your normal color bond next steel fucking, basically color bond roof into what's called color bond ultra. Yep. And that is the one that is a lot more, you know, resistant to the, the salt deposits and shit that gets damaged. Mm-hmm. However, that also decreases, they provide a much more limited warranty yes. because of all the battering that it gets. So they know it's going to get damaged over time. So they actually give you a reduced warranty. So it's something to really keep in mind. But, you know, shit like galvanized bolts and shit, that's like an instantaneous, no matter which rating you're on, you, you've got to deal with that. Mm. Um, and obviously different seals, different everything. So just trying to make them a bit more sturdy to handle the fucking weather and yep. and the shit that you know that's going to be affected over time. Yeah, um, and in the coastal areas is normally when you well the most common area where you'll see two of these three aspects kind of possibly being on a block. Correct. Your coastal and your bushfire attack yeah. is the most common two that would pair up. I mean, they're not that common. But it can happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and or, or you'll get bushfire and the next one that we'll talk about, which is noise. Yeah. Because it's in certain distances of everything. But it's very, very rare to get all three. Yeah. Very um, rare. And again, this is like additional prices to your site work. So yes. keep in mind the block might be cheaper, but there's this that you have to factor Correct. in on your site works. Correct. Um, and the closer you are to the ocean, the more it's going to cost you. Yep. The closer you are to the to forever bushland, the more it's going to cost you fire. And that's the thing. It's like maybe at the end of this, I'll try and give just some rough figures so that people – because they're, they're pretty average across all the builders. So at okay. least someone can go, what the fuck are we in for? Are we in for like 10, 20 grand or is it only five or six grand? Yeah. So okay. I'll, I'll give you guys some rough numbers based on what it is and then – Obviously, again, that changes with each builder because, like like we said with ours, with the fire one, we do the Anticon, even for a 12.5, which mm-hmm. normally you don't need to until 19. So it's just sometimes doing that extra little bit up front makes it a bit more worthwhile in the long run. We'll do it in the summary. Yep. So the last uh, kind of site works item that need to be considered when you look at your block is your noise attenuation. Yeah. And your noise attenuation is... Um, when your block is in proximity to something that has constant noise pollution. Correct. So what we mean by that is like freeways, airports, um, flight paths, 
main roads, racetracks, um, mm-hmm. anything that has constant noise pollution. And or, or like a whole Mr. Enthusiast Street because you're going to have fucking <laughs> absolutely ludicrous <laughs> fucking cars and bikes. Bro, can you imagine if they start doing that? Oh, yeah, you're within proximity of like 15 burnout cars. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, I'm fucking with you guys. It's not actually true. <laughs> so um, some developers, they build walls like noise walls um that reduce noise pollution and alleviate the cost that you would have to factor in when building um and they're normally like the three meter high kind of thick walls what can you can you get can you get trump with a fuck i'm gonna build a wall <laughs> build that wall build that wall i was waiting for you to fuck i was i was trying to wait for fucking ryan to look at me i'm like bro you have to put fucking trump with building a wall up on this shit so i'm i'm being serious here <laughs> So they're, they're like the three meter high walls that are normally yes. decorated to try and... Um, full full limestone blocks and shit. It's yeah. basically to help try and reduce that noise travel going direct into the affected blocks. Yeah, the, the place I'm thinking of that media springs to mind um, is on. in Leonard's Estate, uh, St. Leonard's Estate. It's uh, when no, you're, you're driving down... No, you're talking about Luma. Luma Estate, sorry, Bennett my apologies. Springs. Yes, Bennett Springs. When you're driving down Reed Highway heading towards Midland... You mm-hmm. have this grey wall with these kind of pastel ovals and that's a noise, noise reduction wall because you're next to a main highway that has constant noise, Correct. noise pollution. Yeah, and the main road, which is the other one. Yes. Um, Drumpelia. Yes. I always call it Drumpelia. It's not Drumpelia. <laughs> <Da-doots. laughs> Drumpelia is Drumpelia. It's like, that's in that Bennett Springs area. Yeah, so... Just going past the um, caption. Um, your noise attenuation is assessed by a council. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have guidelines on what's required to comply depending on where you fall, whether the noise is from a freeway or the noise is from an airport. Yeah, or, or a flight path, and each of them can can substantiate can su- substantially be different in cost, mm. yet be in the same rating. Yes. It's it's not a one size fits all, and that's the biggest thing you're going to realize is, oh, it seems the same, and then you look at the requirements and. Noise is probably the most complicated one where you need to ensure that you hit the requirements based on the assessment that's been given for mm-hmm. that rating because it's normally in your local development plan with the land yep. and shows that it's affected. So then you must ensure that it complies with that because otherwise the council won't approve it. Mm. Um, you can sometimes dispute it with an individual assessment, but it can be substantially more expensive to help try and reduce some of the cost, but you might not always fix it. Yeah. So th- these these costs can can ramp up pretty quick for noise. Yeah, and the assessments are literally A, B, or C. Correct, yeah. M- most of it's A, B, or C, but in, in A or B, it can be very different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they could ask for, we want only these specific seals to help reduce the noise for this amount of noise that has been affected in this block. But then what uh, the noise is an interesting one because sometimes it affects more than just one portion of the home. So normally it might be, all of the right hand side of where the living areas are on the east side and the north side you need to that is affected rather than it being the entire area so sometimes you can save on a little bit save on and then have to cost more than others so it's as soon as you do see it make sure you are talking to the consultant the builder to make sure that it fits all the requirements because if it doesn't it can get knocked back by the council to make sure that it costs and that one again you can get we i've been called out with it right in mm. building in here in wa where it shows that it's fixed, you know, like it's an A rating. And we've gone to, because our builder has has A and B fixed costs. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yep, this this works. I go and get it checked with our team at the, with the builder. And they turned around and said, actually, our A doesn't cover all of this. We need to add some extra items into this. So just put a little bit of an extra allowance. So because they had a bit more higher requirements for that assessment. Yeah. Um, so I guess the main thing that we're saying to you guys is when you're thinking of buying a block, um, whether you're getting the consultant to find them or you're trying to find them yourself, and this isn't particularly like directed to the clients who shop for their own block. Yeah. So, we're actually seeing that a lot more now. Yeah. I think yeah. the new generations are super switched on. They're really kind it's of- It's not even just new gen. There's a lot of second home, second home, yeah. third home buyers going, you know what? We know where we want to be. So if we find a block, we're just going to go for it and then we'll settle the build side. Yep, after. So the first thing to be looking for is your site classification because you really do want that sandy block. Correct. And then when you start finding maybe an area that's got primarily sandy blocks um, and you're kind of happy with the site classification, 
The next thing to check is if you are in a bushfire attack level zone, if you're in a coastal zone, or if you're in a noise zone. And you know what? What I've seen on bushfire attack, one house has bell, the next house, literally next door, no bell. Correct. Because they just break off that 100 meter distance. 100%. So you might be a little bit further down that street rather than that perfect block. But if that means you're saving, you know, a couple grand, if not 10 grand, depending on the rating, it's it might be something you can no longer ignore because that's a substantial amount and you're... Um, you need to watch out with your insurances with the home. Yes. Because it's in because it becomes affected in that area. Yep. So you said midway through the pod you want to shout out some rough costs. So let's do a rough cost on bushfire attack. I know that's the one that we encounter the most often. Yep. So let's do a rough price on Bell twelve and a half and Bell nineteen. The rest of them yep. are gonna be all so, hard because they're provisional. Yeah, dead set. So normally with bushfire, what you're gonna be looking at is because it's based on the size of the of the home as well. But mm-hmm. normally, if you're allowing about six to seven, seven and a half grand mm-hmm. for 12.5, you're pretty good yep. with the allowance. Some of them will be like, we do it in five. Yeah, but well, you got to look at the specs and shit. They might rip all your timber frames out and put steel frames, which mm-hmm. is cheaper. So, But again, you got to look at it. It's going to be a couple grand. Bell 19, you got to start getting prepared. It's going to be in that eight to, eight to 12 mark pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously add another... You know, four, four to six grand on top for bell, bell 29, and then it can get even worse at bell 40 yeah. as a potential. And keep in mind, which, which is, is why you need to assess it for what is actually on that block. And you've got to make sure what windows you've got. You might have to change window heights, you might have to change quite a few th- items in there uh, to actually get it to pass those higher ratings as well. And guys, this is a ballpark figure. Please don't Fucking take ballpark. this as gospel. It is based on a standard size home because the bigger the home, the more expensive yeah. it's going to be. And that's so basing on us. Like we build quite a lot of big homes. Yep. Um, something a bit smaller is obviously going to cost you quite a bit less. If you're expecting a bushfire rating like a 12.5 to cost you two, three grand, you're probably barking up the wrong tree. Mm. I will say that. So you're better to, again, it's rough ideas. So then you have something to think about. So when you see a site works cost, a total cost of, you know, 30K, you sit there and go, what the fuck? How is it? 30? Actually, no, it's seven grand in here, 20 grand in here, two grand in here, and then it adds up, and all of a sudden you've got 30. This yep. is why. Yep. Um, let's do a ballpark figure on coastal. Uh, coastal is actually a lot less, so you're probably going to be looking anywhere between like your, your two, five to like four and a half mm-hmm. um, when you're a bit more further away in that, you know, 800 to a, a kilometer, and then it starts ramping up pretty quick. Like we did some in the sub 100. And I think it was about 20, 22 grand um, because they're like right on the beach and yeah. near the fucking pubs and shit. That's a bit more up up the coast near Eglinton um, with like the big quad garages and shit. So it, it ramps up pretty quick. Mm. Um, there is one that hits me about a combination, which I did want to bring up. It's one of our big garages that we're about to start. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and they are in a noise affected area because it's uh, the block is, is very close proximity to the freeway. Mm-hmm. So it has an enormous fucking... You're talking about three meters. This thing's like fucking four or five meters tall. Mm-hmm. It's huge uh, to try and reduce all of that noise traffic coming from the freeway. And so they're in a noise affected area, a B, which is a bit how you're going. Mm-hmm. But then they're also close to, because of the where the freeway is, they have some forever bushland there that hasn't been trimmed recently. So the zoning got hit with a 29, Ooh. which I was like, oh, fuck. So you try and fix on one of them. And it was going to come into about, I think it was about 18, 19 grand. But then because of the the noise requirements, they had to continue increasing the thickness of windows and upgrading to comply with both. Mm. You know, having to go to commercial framing, it was nearly 60K. Jeepers. So again, you don't know what you're in for until you've done all the assessments and they have to go through in detail because one of them only works for that type of rating, but then it can but almost detrimental to the other type of thing. Mm. So, but you got to remember like the block was a lot cheaper yep. to try and compensate, but not enough to that substantial not amount. Enough for 60 and I was thinking with the developer going, what the fuck, man? And he's like, well, we dropped a little bit and there's no other blocks of that size. So take it or leave it and just sit there and go, well, we're going to cop it. Yeah. But you're better to deal with it now and know that you're going to go through and get the permits done then be left with a fucking bill afterwards and go, oh shit. Yeah. And I think. As That's the thing is like it can just, you know, it can skyrocket very quickly. So just be prepared. Don't think, oh, I'm saving 10 grand to have a combination of a bushfire and a noise or a bushfire and a noise and a coastal. Yeah. That is going to, you know, should be right. 
it might cost you more mm. than finding a block that didn't have that just a little bit further away for but, the same size. You know, it's all about your wants and if you're willing to pay, yes. then all hats off to you. And if your budget works. But you know what, It's this is probably the most important thing about if if you're not finding the land yourself at least have the information for it but if you're talking to someone who is a consultant and they're finding the land for you which is super common in australia yeah, or they do the yeah. um the land and the house kind of together they package it up for you and that's what we do mm-hmm. it's super important to find someone who knows their stuff because this is the kind of things that we look out for when you say i want to build in byford or i want to build in eglinton these are the kind of things that we are considering when we're searching for a block for you. Yeah. You say that I want a block by the coast, awesome. But how close and how much are you willing to spend? And that's an upfront conversation that you have with clients quite quickly going, love the idea, love mm. the concept, but are you willing to pay the extra to be an extra 100 metres to the beach? Yeah. Um, and if the clients say, yeah, and the budget allows, awesome. Happy days. Then we go but for it. if they say, oh, I didn't realise that, at least they're not upfront. And then when you present to them their options they know why you haven't gone so close to the ocean when they originally yeah, asked it. for it. Yeah, well, there is so many things that are running through my mind when I'm having the you know the conversations with clients. Mm. The biggest one, obviously, is we find out the budget. And then when we start going through about looking at the land, you know, we tell people to try and listen to our episodes, not to try and get more views and shit. I don't give a fuck. It's just called a fucking info. Yeah. So then you can actually understand what I'm going through and why I'm asking certain questions and going, that's not going to work, that's not going to work. It's not because I'm trying to be a prick. I don't give a fuck. It's more about it's not going to work with the with the plan of attack that you're looking for, plus the budget, plus the concept of what you're looking for. So we need to be able to be realistic, but also affordable to make everything else work. Because if you spend too much on the land, might as well just pitch up a fucking tent. That's all you can afford with the end of, with the remainder of your budget. Yep. So we've got to make sure that we don't spend too much on the block with all these extra upgrades. Because when I do the calculations, I'm looking at the price of the block any discounts we might be able to get and then your site works immediately mm-hmm. with bushfire or anything that's affected calculate that off your total budget that's what you got left for the house yep house is the easiest part to fuck around with because you might have you might have to drop the spec or drop to a smaller realistic plan but the land's the land yep so do you know what I mean it, it's those type of things that we look at rather than get sold in the house and then get yeeted somewhere that you don't want to be and then you fucking hate it yeah that's it um and guys, the reason why you have to do so much for these three components is because you have to comply with the regulations that are yeah, put the council in place. regs and shit. Yeah, um, because if you don't get your permits, you essentially can't build. So you can sit there and say, "Oh, just don't include the bushfire attack. It's fine. I'll I'll, I'll survive without it. I'll just keep my eye out." It doesn't really work that <laughs> way. Like you have to have this. I'll included. use my telescope. <laughs> like you have to have this included in your home. To get the permit, without Correct. the permit, you're not building. The build, the builder can't can't lay anything down without that permit. So if if you're building a home without the correct permits, guess what? You're gonna have to rip it down yep. if the council finds it. So it's not worth the risk or anything. Just follow the guidelines, pay for what it is. There's a reason for it. That it's not there to try and take more money out of it. There's a potential risk with that block. Mm. So we're trying. They're trying to put enough preventative measures in there to still keep it safe and sturdy the home that's it that's what it's there for so i hope that gave you guys a little bit more info and i hope we've given enough information on site works um well if not i feel like it's enough last episode (laughs) in today's episode um if you guys have any questions please reach out to us and send them through uh we'll answer them immediately but honestly we'd love to do another q a on the pod yeah i'm loving them getting awesome questions through and i think the more information we give to you guys the more we realise the small final details that we might have missed, uh, where people go, understood everything, but what about this? Mm. And those are the kind of questions that like, we don't really think about in the moment because we're trying to deliver so much. It's so easy to miss the little finale details. That yeah, and that's fine. So ask. we can just touch it over. Yeah. yeah. And just have it there for other people because the thing is, is there is nothing else out like this out there and mm. it will have been really beneficial for us fucking seven eight years ago when we built to have something like this where i can just sit there and go cool that actually applies to what i'm thinking about that's actually quite handy if you can, like we said if you can take a slither out of this entire fucking podcast series or even in each episode that you've learned something i fucking we've done our job yep that's it like we're not doing this to try and bring more business into our fucking like we're, we're flat stick mm-hmm. and we love what we do but getting this out there is what it's all about educating people 
without a hidden fucking agenda is what we're all about. Yeah. And it makes my job easier. It makes it's your job growth. easier because we can say, listen to 100%. the pod. There's all it, your it's, answers it's, questions. Yeah, it's part of our thing your now. answers questions? No, 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 not that. <laughs> so it's become one of our things that in our booking system is you actually, you know, we sit and go, hey, look, make sure you bring this and this. Also, make sure you actually listen to the first this, this and this episode because this will help with the conversations we're going to go through. So it's actually giving a bit more info. It's more feasible if you do actually listen to it because every person that has has come into the appointment with more questions and gone, that actually really helped and now we know what we're looking for. More direct questions. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's what it's there for. And it's always available. We've got, you know, you guys might be, a lot of people listening to this, I think, mostly on Spotify. Yep. Um, You know, if anyone's got it on YouTube and shit, fucking happy days. Let us know. You know, the video quality, are you happy with it, with the cut, you know, all that double shit, I don't know. Fucking all, all the bits and bobs. All the bits and bobs. So, um, if you guys could leave a reading, a review or a rating, that would be amazing. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that follow button. Um, it really helps us in the back end. Um, let's plug, plug, plug. Cool, cool, cool. You can find us on... Facebook, TikTok, uh, Insta, Google, Apple Podcast, Spotify, YouTube, and Google. And our website. Oh, yeah, and our website. And our website. <laughs> Which is www.mrenthusiast.net.au. Or just um, type Mr. Enthusiast, you'll find us on Google. Yep. Uh, and just remember, guys, we're not here. To fuck spiders. Woo.